right. Welcome back to Steps to Freedom. Great. So we're in class tonight. This is our 12th week. No. Is it? It's our 11th week. 11th week. Um, and so there's a few things. So the miracle list, if I took both of the miracle lists, right, and I combined them. And so the, the miracle list that I'm going to give you, that complete copy, has got 18 items on it. Now, a few of those items are encouragements like keep going, don't give up, don't stop this process. Maybe you feel like you, were, you had a lot of momentum in the beginning and now you're like, oh, everything's quiet, maybe I'm done or I don't have to keep going. No, keep going, don't give up. Another encouragement that he gives is once you start this process, um, you started with Mike Smith's Miracle List and the Arizona Deliverance Center, stay with it for a time. I'm not saying you have to stay, I'm not, I'm not saying stay with us, you know, infinity. I'm saying just stay with us for a time, work the deliverance program, and at some point, God will let you know, yeah, move on. But right now, while you're in the process, don't get on Isaiah Saldivar. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just begin with the top. I'll just get it right off the top. I love that guy. He's awesome. He talks 100 miles an hour. I love it. My brain loves it. The problem is he's shooting out all this information, and you're going through the miracle list, which is a slow, step-by-step process based on repentance. And he's, he's, he's speaking to the masses, literally the masses, right? It's going to confuse you. It's going to bring confusion. So save him for later. He's great. I think he's great. Um, he's got some people on there. Pastor Vlad, Vladimir uh, from Hungry Generation. I love that guy too. Um, just save him over here. Okay. Stick with Brother Mike's teachings to, or you'll get confused. That's, that's the only thing he's saying. Stick with us for a time. Get things straight in your mind. Go through the list. Work, work your deliverance. And then, you know, and then there's a time where you can branch out. Okay. So that's, that's I'm just saying that. Um, that's one of the items on the miracle list that I didn't write a chapter for, right? So who, why it's not necessary to do that. Um, I'm excited about all the, the prayer requests that we stated, that you all stated. We collected them the second week of class, and now over, I believe, half of them have been answered in just a short amount of time. A lot of people say, wow, I pray, and I, God's not hearing me. I, my prayers are not getting answered. But you can tell me, right, your prayer, some of your prayers have gotten answered in a very short amount of time. As you focused on the Lord, you've been working on yourself, you've been forgiving the people in your life, catching those offenses, you know, not going to sleep, not going to bed with anger still brewing. You know, maybe you still feel that anger, but you're not adding to it. All right, we all got to work. We're working it out. So tonight is the 11th week, and we're on self-deliverance. And Brother Mike uh, has, you know, he has a website, hardcorechristianity.com. And on that website, there's a teachings and there's a deliverance tab up at the top. And, it, and he says, go down to self-deliverance. And that's what this chapter is that I um, put together for you. Psalm 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Um, Sister Jennifer has got a testimony. Uh, I'll just summarize. Is that okay? She went, she went to a church. She wanted to go to church. And, um, you know, going to church can be difficult these days because there's a lot of churches that uh, don't preach Jesus. Or they're preaching another Jesus. Or they're adding to Jesus. I used to go to a church where they said, Jesus plus nothing. What? We're all, Jesus plus nothing. We are only going to focus on Jesus of the Bible. Okay. We're not adding. 
angels and you know, numerology and personality tests and the Enneagram. And we're not adding all those things. We're just going to focus on Jesus and that's it. Anyway, she went to a church and this speaker at the church was talking about angels calling upon your angels to help you. Um, well, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, which is God, what do you need an angel for? What do you need that for? You have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. You have authority over the enemy. You have the Holy Spirit of God in you. You got Jesus praying for you, interceding for you. You got the Holy Spirit interceding for you. You got you reading the Bible, interceding for yourself. Yeah, we all have ministering angels. There's one little mention of it. They're there. I'm glad for them. Him. I don't, there's never mention of a female angel. So, um, But we don't need to call upon the hosts of heaven to help us. We have God. We have the Holy Spirit of God who is very powerful. We've seen it in this room. We've been set free by that power alone. Anyway, she goes to this church, and the woman's talking about angels, right? Calling upon angels, is that right? Okay. So she thought, she's like, wow, I don't think I should be here. She went home uh, that day or this week, to, I don't know, a couple days later. She was just meditating on the word, you know, the word of the Lord and just kind of resting in his presence. And she started to feel sick. And she ran to the bathroom and started throwing up. And she said, is it possible that was deliverance? It felt like deliverance. I said, yes, it is. It's called sovereign deliverance. Amen. The Lord is our deliverer. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me. Thank you. He's the deliverer. We come in agreement with him. We come in agreement with God's word. And that's how we have authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt us or harm us, right? So um, we're talking about self-deliverance tonight. And there's a couple of things that I want to address before we get into that. So in, on the very first page, it gives you the website. And even if you have done self-deliverance before, and everyone in here, I believe, has gone through a measure of deliverance. So this includes all of us. I still encourage you to read through the instructions and um, glean something new from it. So now that you've finished the list, it's time to really engage in self-deliverance, okay? But the introduction, it starts, it says, number one, can a Christian have, no, can a Christian be demon-possessed? You should know the answer to this question. The answer is no. You cannot be demon-possessed, not a Christian. To be possessed means that the evil spirits are living in your spirit and not and are in almost total control of the person. Okay? The Holy Spirit li lives in the spirit man, and the demons cannot get into that area of the person. All right, so number two, can a Christian have spirits or be demonized? Yes, we know the answer. Okay, so we have the Greek word there. I'm not going to try to pronounce that word. Um, but it's translated as possessed in the King James Version, which means to be under the spirit, under, under the control of a spirit, or in some varying degree. So demons cannot can enter into the body or the brain of a Christian Many different ways. They may be inhabiting the body or brain prior to salvation and were never cast out after being born again. Mike calls this carryover. And so you can read more about carryover on the website under the teaching tab. All right, so um, spirits may have entered the body or brain when the Christian backslid or turn their back on the Lord to return to temporarily to sinful lifestyle. Let us see. They may have entered the body while in the womb through a family or generational sin, 
word curses or witchcraft curses. Letter D, a person may be oppressed and the demons may not be inside the body or the brain, but around the person. They may be attacking from the outside only. 100% of all Christians face this daily. Number three, it says, um, does it say anywhere in the Bible that Christians cannot have spirits? No, it doesn't. Teachings that a Christian cannot have demons is an old wives' tale and has no biblical support. Jesus called deliverance the children's bread in Matthew 15, 26, meaning it was God's children. It was, you know, it's for God's children. Deliverance benefits Deliverance benefits were paid for in the atonement. Delivering sinners from demons can be dangerous because they have no spiritual weapons to fight the spirits with. So when, um, if a non-believer expels spirits, they don't have any way of keeping them from getting back in. So, so it's dangerous for them to be delivered. If the spirits re-enter the body of a, person, of, of a person, the condition can become worse than before the original deliverance. That's in Matthew 12, 43 through 45. Number four. Can a Christian self-deliver from soul wounds, spirits, physical illness, diseases, mental illness? The answer is yes. The ministry of laying on of hands applies to all believers, including oneself. Mark chapter 16, verse 18. Okay, so how do we do this? So in preparation, you must be desperate. And determined to be delivered. You must want the spirits out of your life more than anything else in the world. You have to hate them. A casual approach is not going to work. It's not going to work. If you hold back the evil spirits will sense your hesitation and they will not leave. Number two. In preparation, you must have repented of all your sin with tears and deep sincerity. A casual repentance will not work. You must hate your sin and run from unforgiveness, anger, bitterness, fornication, and pride. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. You must be willing to give the Lord everything you have, and make a complete surrender of your life to Him without reservation. You cannot hold back. Luke 14, 33. I'm going to stop a second here because there are some people who, who get in an uh, obsessive type of thinking. Uh, did I repent of all my sin? And, they, and they, they think really more and they're writing lists and they're obsessing over this over and over again. There's no need for that. The Holy Spirit will tell you if you're missing something. Okay? He'll tell you. Do not go in search of the sin that you haven't repented of. Leave it to God to remind you, to tell you. I call it God's spotlight. When I first became a Christian, I noticed that there were certain areas of my life God, like I call, said, it was shining His spotlight upon it. I kept recognizing it over and over and over again. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was God pointing it out in my life, telling me, I want you to deal with that. Deal with that. If the Lord showed us all of our sin all at once, I think it'd kill us. Okay? So do not be so hard on yourselves. Remember, Jesus died on the cross for our sin, right? It's forgiven. It's washed in the blood. Now the Holy Spirit shows us, hey, this is this persisting thing in your life. I want you to deal with it. You know you've, you've sinned. You know you cheated. You know you lied. You know you blasphemed God's name. You know you got to deal with that. It's on your mind. Don't push it to the side. 
But then again, you don't have to go thinking, what did I do in eighth grade? Oh, gosh, eighth grade, I made a lot of mistakes. Let me think about them. Did I cheat on that spell? No, wait, was that seventh grade I cheated on that spelling test? Forget about it. That's the devil. Okay? Don't do that. Let the Holy Spirit bring it to your mind. Okay? All right, next, number three. You must be ready to fight for your life. Indeed. The kingdom of God must suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. We've done war tongues in here, and that's taking it by force. Let me tell you, some people who I've worked with them, they have, they were in, if you're involved in the new age, let me just say this, if you were in the past involved in the new age or in witchcraft, you are in for a fight. They will drag you out of bed. They will put bruises and scratches on your body. They do not want to leave. You better be ready. They will fight you. And you have the power and the authority to fight back. You might feel afraid. Don't worry about that. You just push that feeling to the side and then you fight. Because they don't want to leave. They have a hold of you. You might be born again, doing things well, but they got you. You just keep fighting. You keep renewing your mind. You have to renew your mind. You have to accept God's word as your truth. It has to be your truth. Yes. So is that why deliverance is so painful? It is extremely painful. Yeah, me. literally painful. Yes. Painful in the body. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. If you were involved in the New Age or in witchcraft of any kind. A long time ago, I did some tarot cards and stuff like that. There you go. Yeah, That's witchcraft. witchcraft. Yeah, I know. Okay. So if you were involved in that, they, I mean, I heard a, a testimony of a man tell me. He's like, it felt like somebody was inside my gut squeezing this part of their body. He's like, I was in a ball screaming in pain. It was so pain, sweating profusely. I would not let go. Yeah, those are new age spirits. Those are witchcraft spirits. Those are terrifying spirits. And yeah, it's painful. Anxiety. I've, I mean, I've been in the hospital twice because I thought I was having a heart attack. The pain was so great. Those are spirits. They're all spirits. Yeah. Sometimes people get delivered. Those spirits throw the person forward. I like, I, I hurt my shoulder. It's still kind of sore. I was ha holding that, that woman in the chair as these things were launching her forward. They were very powerful. And it hurts. That's a lot of times tears come. Because it does hurt. But you don't give up. Do not give up. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep renewing this. It was, I was first being delivered at the old place. Mm -hmm. The Londo. I don't even remember. But yeah, House of Healing. Yeah. So I was in the room, and I was actually being, I was on my knees, and I was holding on so I wouldn't be pulled across the floor. Mm -hmm. It was intense. Yeah, that, that's, that's witchcraft. And mm -hmm. then when Mike did it um, with his wife, I felt the little things jumping on the bed. And I still see them in pictures, like the dem demonic things. I can, okay. see, I can see the images. Which Keep fighting. That is, and I'm not scared. I'm totally not scared of it. But I will let you know when I before I delivered myself from alcoholism, drinking and smoking cigarettes almost two years ago, I was putting it off because I knew how painful it was. It's painful. It, it, the last time I did it, it was it was treacherous. It was so bloody painful, and I don't know if anybody else has that reservation. It's like, oh, I don't want to do it because mm -hmm. this is easier. And going through deliverance is to tell people the truth. It is painful. It's not easy. Yes, thank you for that testimony. You're right. It is painful. Deliverance is painful. Comes in not giving up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the tears are about. I mean, it doesn't feel good to throw up. <laughs> it doesn't feel good when they're coming out. It doesn't. 
but you feel so much better afterwards. Amen. You feel so much better and you can think. And, and I was saying this earlier, you may not feel anything for a while. You might not see any changes in your life, but you know they're in there and you just keep going because you will get your breakthrough. And that is breakthrough. And then you know it's breakthrough, right? You're like, I keep fighting. I keep casting these things out. I keep renewing my mind. I keep catching my thoughts. I keep casting down imaginations. I keep choosing love over hate. I, I keep doing it, you know? And then one day your healing will break forth like the dawn. It will quickly appear. It will happen. You just stay, stay strong, stay connected. And that's, and I'll take a mini break to say, stay connected to the body. Take, stay connected to like-minded believers, because when you're, you got to hang on because this thing is is thrashing you. Who are you gonna tell? Who are you gonna tell? You better know some people. You know. You better know some people. So I'm so glad that you have all stuck it out. This is amazing. You've been coming every week, and, and we're going through it together and listening, and, and you're praying for each other, and it's really awesome because we need each other. I, I really believe that do not forsake the assembly of believers. We are believers. We are really like-minded believers assembling together, and we can relate to each other. This is real stuff. You know, so thank you for that, Angie. Um, yeah, you got to be ready to fight for your life. If you won't fight, the demons won't have to fight. They won't have to fight to stay. They'll just stay. Um, you know, you reap what you sow, Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Number four. Spend as much time in prayer as you can prior to your deliverance date. And ask a couple of close friends to pray for you, for you in preparation. Keep fasting to a minimum. Get plenty of rest. You must show the Lord in the kingdom of darkness you are serious. If you don't show them, they will continue to show you sickness Misery, suffering, sorrow, frustration, disease, guilt, shame, confusion, headaches, heartache, and premature death. I talked to a sister today. She's got brain demons. And she calls me every once in a while, and I told her, I said, look, if you won't fight... If you won't take these thoughts captive, it's a negative thought, it's an outlandish thought, it's, it's, it's tormenting you with fear and worry. If you won't take those thoughts captive, you'll die in this condition. You'll die sick. She's like, what are you saying, spiritually die? I'm like, no, physically die. You will physically die like this, in this condition. It'll never change. You have to keep fighting. So, um, so that's that, number four. Okay, warning. If you have not repented of your sin, of all your sin, and forgiven everyone in your life, and are unwilling to make restitution where applicable, meaning you call that ex-husband, and you, and you say, you know what? I am sorry that I cheated on you. I am sorry that I didn't give the marriage 100%. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. It's not easy. I know. I did it once. <laughs> yeah. He didn't say he was sorry, though, but it didn't matter. I was calling to say I'm sorry. I messed up. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's Sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we can't, right? But if, if you can... Apologize. If you are not willing to do that, do not proceed. If you continue, you proceed based on your own faith in the Word of God. You need more than that. 
If you continue, you'll proceed based on the personal, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be proceeding based on your own self and not the help from the Holy Spirit. Because if you have unforgiveness or awe, or you got some stuff that you haven't dealt with in your life, you don't get the Holy Spirit to help you in the process. It's just you doing it. So you need the personal presence of the Holy Spirit. Number six, under no circumstances will you hold any... Okay, so this is if you come here to hardcore Christianity or you go through this, you're not... Under no circumstances will you hold any representative of hardcore Christianity incorporated responsible for any kind of benefit or detriment you may experience during or as a result of this process. You understand no monies are to be paid to hardcore Christianity for services. Uh, freely we have received, freely we give. Hardcore Christianity does not charge fees for God's benefits. Donations, however, are accepted and appreciated. We're in this room, there's air conditioning on, there's lights. I made these copies. Uh, some of you feel compelled. You're directed by the Holy Spirit to give a love offering, to, to you know, whatever. But there's no fee. There's never a fee. Um, and I like that. That's a great model that Mike has established. And all the ministers here, we go by that. Look how God is blessed. And God has blessed. Tremendously, yeah, it's great. All right, the deliverance procedure. So first you want to worship the Lord. You know, tell him how beautiful he is, how wonderful he is. Invite the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit into the room. Relax while worshiping. Be relaxed. This is not something you strive to do, okay? You want to keep yourself calm. There's a reason for this. You don't want to mistake the presence of God for evil spirits being conjured up. So keep yourself calm. Keep yourself relaxed. All right? Um, relax while worship. Take your time. Express your love for Him and for your complete dependence on Him and His mercy. Um, number two, you can lay down in a comfortable area. In a quiet, dimly lit room, you can just lay in your bed. You don't have to be, you know, on your face, praying and crying. No, just relax. Just relax. Relax and meditate on the goodness of the Lord and His Word. You want to bring your heart rate down. You want to quiet your breathing. Okay? You place your hands on your skin, maybe your lower abdomen. You could put it on your forehead, okay? And, and silently in your mind, begin to cover yourself by faith with the precious blood of Christ through your groins, hips, internal organs. Worship and glorify and magnify His greatness and thank Him for His blood as intensely as you can in your mind. Do it all in your mind. Meditate on the rich beauty of his life, saving blood. Focus on the broken body of Christ. He willfully gave for your healing. Pray in your mind only, not audibly. When you speak audibly, the spirits know what you're saying. Just do it in your mind. Okay? But yeah, but don't speak in tongues when you're doing this process. When you're going through deliverance? Yeah. Well, this is, I'm just, I'm reading you what he said. Okay. So don't speak in tongues yet, okay? So you're relaxed and you start covering yourself in your mind only with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. I, I apply your blood to my body. I, you know, you start praying. And then you're going to repeat this procedure over your stomach, your heart, your throat, your forehead, the back of your neck. Spend several minutes on each area, 
silently praying, meditating on the precious and powerful healing, delivering and enriching blood of Jesus. Okay, so you're silently praying, you're meditating on God's um, his blood. It, it's a this is a spiritual thing, right? So the blood of Jesus has got all this power. And you're doing this as sincerely but aggressively also in your mind. Okay, and the reference there, Matthew 8, 3. These are the areas spirits usually reside in the body. So that's why you're focusing on these areas of your body. Don't worry about your feet. <laughs> worry about your core, your back of your neck, your head, right? Worry about that. Now, manifestations may begin, may, they don't always begin. You may feel something unusual in your body, such as pain or twitching. You might start shaking, quivering, aching. You might have pain. You might feel coldness, cramping. You might feel paralyzed, a paralysis. You might feel some numbness, some tingling, nausea. You might feel some movement, something moving around in your body. You may have strange thoughts racing through your mind. You might begin to say, see pictures. These are spirits manifesting. These sensations indicate that you have the anointing. Okay, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom, liberty, right? So... The anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. These things don't like the anointing, so they start to move. They start to get try to distract you. So that's what's happening. The demons are moving in fear, and the Holy Spirit is present and exposing the Spirit. So keep going. Your faith is working. Number six, breathe out of your mouth while you're commanding these spirits to come out using only your mind. Start there. This is a slow down process, okay? Be aggressive. You can just think, right, in your mind, like... Mm. <laughs> and then switch to verbal commands when the spirits start to come out. And so how do they come out? They come out through tears. They come out through yawns. They come out with burps. They come out through coughing. Okay? They can scream out. Yeah, you, you probably won't go from zero to screaming. You might. But you might be experiencing something else before you get there. Um, but once they start coming out, switch to the verbal commands. Okay? Use your mind commands and verbal commands in unison. So you're thinking it and you're saying it. Okay? Well, how can you say something you didn't think? But you just want to be conscious of what your mind is thinking. You want to stay in control of your mind. You don't want the spirits to take over control of your mind. That's why he's saying this here. Okay? I've, I've seen many people, they go, they start screaming and they are cussing and they lose control of their mind. You have to call them back. Okay, come, hey, sister, come back. Oh, all right, now you're present, so, hey, you don't have to do all that. Don't let the demons thrash you. You don't have to say um, the F word comes to mind. You don't have to speak that word. Okay, they'll tell it to you and it'll be a strong, you'll have a strong urge to say it, but stay present in your mind and don't let those spirits control you. Now, it's not always possible, but, but give it a strong effort. Okay, I had a guy one time, we'll talk, I know, I'll continue this I'll, stories. So I had this guy, I was, in, I was new. He got out of his chair, he starts pacing and he's coming right up to me. He's tall, too. And then he was, I don't know, he was in the chair. He's rocking back and forth. And he was all kinds of crazy manifestations. 
I'm in the office. I, I stick my head out of the office. I'm like, hey, Rick, come here. <laughs> Need some help? So we just went in there, and he's like, hey, brother, wait, brother, hey, 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 don't let the spirits do that to you. Stay present. You fight them. And I was like, oh, you can do that? Okay, great. You know, and we don't know, right? They, they start to take over. They start to shake. They start to tell you things. And the person speaking, no, just be really aggressive and stay present in your mind. So you're casting out, get out of me. You're thinking, get out of me. And it keeps them subdued and they'll come out a lot easier. Okay? So don't let them take over your mind. Um, the more you use your faith, the more you please your heavenly father. Okay. Caution. If you experience violent shaking, <clears throat> severe cramping, frightening visions or images, loud voices, if you have material objects move or fall in the room, stop immediately. Discontinue this time and seek assistance from someone you trust, okay? Come to, come to the Arizona Deliverance Center, call us, call somebody you know that knows about deliverance, get help. Because once that happens, they're now in control and you're out of control and you could get hurt. So get help, okay? They want to, they want to hurt you. Um, yeah, someone you trust and has experience expelling demons. You know, if they could be a Christian 20 years, but never have done this before. So, you know, go to someone who has experience. Okay, so now we're at the point where expelling these evil entities, these evil spirits. So demons are subject to the name of Jesus. They don't like the name of Jesus. They're subject to the blood of Jesus, the cross of Calvary, the resurrection of Christ, the word of God, the Holy Spirit, and your childlike faith. Christ came in the flesh and now is your prophet and high priest in heaven. He is praying for you. He is interceding for you. He is in on this event when you're casting out. You're not alone. When the spirits leave, you may experience something physical. Pressure lifting out of your head or body. Um, a dissipating coldness. Maybe you had a, your hands were really cold. You might feel it leaving. Coughing, vomiting, burping, spitting, yawning. Wrenching in your stomach or shaking and releasing. When they leave, you may feel euphoria body warmth or lightness. A lightness may come over your brain or your body or a clearing of your mind. This is a sign the spirits are leaving or have left your body. Keep going. You're not done. <laughs> okay? Don't stop, even though it's really awesome. Don't stop because another wave is coming, right? You are winning in Jesus' mighty name. So keep going. <clears throat> Number three, um, you want to speak directly to the spirits, Mark 11, in your physical and mental illness. So um, does anyone have a, a physical illness in here? Okay. What is it? Yeah. You. It's end stage renal disease. End stage renal disease. Okay. So you would be speaking to that renal disease. And saying, renal disease, come out of me. You just speak right to it. Put your hands on your kidneys. You know, get out of me in Jesus' name. Um, what, Angie, what about you? Um, you have a physical illness? Yeah, it's been really, really bad lately. I mean, huge. Like, I have really bad issues getting up and walking my feet. Mm. Yes. What is it that you have? I try desperately to get rid of diabetes. Diabetes, okay. And it's huge now. It's like to the point I was it's going away a little a little bit because I've been getting rid of the bitterness in my life. Um, mm. but I've been sleeping like in the bathtub 
it's, it's that severe. I just, since I got laid off of work, I don't have insurance. Mm. And so it's, mm, these shoes are comfortable, but it's just, I get up and I can't walk. It just hurts so intensely. And it's okay. six and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I, I don't want to become that person. Yeah. At all, because that's just not worth living. Right. And it just makes me want to think more of, um, you know, just bad thoughts. You know, because everything else in my life is good. I don't do anything bad at all, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in her opinion. Yeah. Okay. So, are you doing self deliverance every day? Every day. Okay. Are you blessing yourself every day? I don't think I've been blessed. I've been thanking God a lot lately. Okay, so diabetes works a lot like an autoimmune disease, from what I've read. And it has to do with not liking yourself. Oh, yeah, that's just been since I was born. Since I was born. Okay, yeah. so try it. It's not, it's not in here. This is for me. Get yourself some oil. Could be canola oil, olive oil, just say a little prayer that I'm asking, just pray over it a little bit. And then just every morning as part of your routine, mm -hmm. anoint yourself with oil and bless yourself. Mm -hmm. Pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. I thought diabetes was like the bitterness and um, like the root of it. Well, I, th hate too. I think there's a lot working there. I, I I don't know everything. I just know that diabetes works a lot like an autoimmune disease because it's not, it's not allowing the body to function. It's holding, it's withholding instead of attacking, right? Or is it attacking also? Well, wouldn't that be attacking, like hurting my feet, they're cramped up and I can't move? Well, I mean, definitely, definitely that's attacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's so that would be like a, your body's attacking itself. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I eventually I can walk, but I have to like wait like three seconds or something and put one foot in front of the other, and I'm like, this nerve is ridiculous. Damage. Yeah, it's nerve damage. Yeah, and I know that my drinking didn't help at all, So, but when I went through my own deliverance about a year, almost two years ago, the spirit came and it said, I'm going to kill you, and I was fighting against it, and my mom came in my room and go, I get out, I'm right in the middle of this, because it was really bad, because... I was putting mm -hmm. it off because I didn't want to go through the pain. <laughs> I went through it. But now she says, Demon, I don't care what yeah, you do to me. Yeah, I, I do not care. You get out in Jesus' yeah. name, right? Yeah. You can't you can't uh, mess around with this stuff because it wants to kill you or get you to kill yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I've had right. that. Mm -hmm. Right. You have those thoughts still. Okay, there's no condemnation in Christ. It's not even your thought. Right. Those are not your thoughts, right? We catch them and we say, no, that's not my thought. I'm not even going to take responsibility for that thought. All right, this, my feet hurt. This is terrible. I don't like it. Oh, Lord, this is terrible, but you're helping me, Lord. And I'm going to keep speaking to my feet, and I'm going to keep blessing myself. If you have a physical illness, really, anoint yourself with oil every single day. Take communion. I mean, do it all. Get people to pray for you. Cast out. Keep reading. You know, you got to keep doing it. We should not be sick. You have to fight. Yes. You have to fight. You have, to, you have a bunch of weapons. Um, sister in the back. Yes, um, Susan. My experience with the bottom of my feet hurting was uh, my, one of my daughters had give, given me, uh, one of my, my granddaughter, money to go to get our feet done. And oh. when we go to those places, they have all those idols. Right. And so uh, I don't really like going there, but I did it because all my granddaughters are going, and so I decided to go with them. I was hesitant to go, but I went. And I never had this experience before, but when I went in, uh, you could see the incense and everything. and I just had them done, but right after that, uh, and this has been a couple of months uh, where the night that I went, I had extreme pain mm -hmm. continuously, 24-7, and the swelling of my feet from that day that, the day that I had my pedicure done. Mm -hmm. And then, 
I, we did deliverance and it was taken from me. So it just showed me that I have to be careful to not trade areas. So let me ask this side of the room, what happened to her? She went into an area that had spirits. Okay, but what actually happened? She picked up a transfer. She yeah. went into a nail salon, had a pedicure done. And the place, probably Vietnamese place, right? Yeah. They got their idols, their incense, yeah. their, their oranges, and they got their stuff, and, and you picked up a transfer, and then it had to be casted out. Yes. Good testimony. Thanks for that. That goes along with massages, too. Yes. You've got to be careful. That's for sure. I, uh, I had that done. Let me continue on this. So um, you're speaking directly to the spirits. You're speaking directly to your physical illness. You're speaking directly to the mental illness. If you have some type of mental illness, anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, uh, eating disorder, anorexia, bulimia, you speak to that thing. It's a thing. It's a, it's a person in your body. You tell it to leave in Jesus' name. It will take over. Okay, you start using your mind and then you transition to verbal commands, do not pray anymore. You cannot pray demons out. You have to cast them out. So at this point, you've already prayed, and God has said yes. God is not withholding from you. I'll say that again. God is not withholding deliverance from you. Take command and use your authority. Luke 10, 19, and Matthew 18, 18. Remind the demons that you have repented of all your sins, that all doors of sin to sin have been closed, and that they have no legal right to damage or hold you in bondage anymore. If God gives you the name of a demon or their number, you can use this information to command them out, to leave as Jesus did in Mark Chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. You can also call them out <clears throat> by the symptoms they're causing. Pain in my feet, get out. Numbness in my feet, come out. Get out of me, in Jesus' name. Disabilities, depression, pain, lust, anger, envy, confusion, fear, cancer, bipolar, ulcers, OCD, PS, P. PTSD, etc. Okay, flashbacks come out, sadness come out, you know, exhaustion come out. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. What, you just had lunch. You shouldn't be exhausted. Our culture has trained us to believe that we're supposed to be tired at two o'clock. Cast it out. You'll see what happens. You'll be awake. Um, all right, so you can remind them the Lord came to destroy their works and the devil is defeated. John chapter 12, verse 31, and six, chapter 16, verse 11. Command them to listen and leave. I command you to listen. You can bind them. You can tell them to separate one from another. Stop communicating with each other. You have been given power to crush the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And the owls and the screech owls. I was reading about that in Isaiah today. You have the power. Cast them out. The porcupines and the pelicans. <laughs> I'm in the Old Testament reading and I was reading about that. You will not be hurt. Continue to tell the devil about the blood and how he's defeated and command them all to leave your body and your brain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rebuke them sharply. Bind them. Command them to loose you. No, stop causing me pain. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Get out. Leave me right now. Demons can be beaten down by godly commands and the Holy Scripture. Quote Bible verses about the power of the blood and the cross of uh, uh, the glory of the cross. Excuse me. Number five, renounce any spirits that go in to your body through religion or church denominations. Catholicism. There's a ton of idol worship in Catholicism. Renounce that. Renounce the rosary beads. Renounce the praying to the saints. They're dead. That's necromancy. 
You are practicing witchcraft when you pray to dead people, your dead relatives, uh, saints that have, you know, died. Um, no. False Protestant churches, Mormonism, the Amish, Christian Science, the Advent, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witnesses, Hindu, Islam, Buddhism, the Masons, the Shriners, the KKK, uh, different cults, anything like that. you got to renounce this stuff. Maybe you know it's in your family line. you got to renounce it. Okay? Renounce all sexual perversion, adultery, fornication, escort, group sex, divorce, bestiality, sexual abuse, homosexuality, pornography, and the like, and sinful friends, and the occult, palm readers, horoscopes, where people are getting deliverance right now, <laughs> readings, <laughs> tea leaf readings, coffee ground readings, right? Channeling, hypnosis, talking to the dead, I just mentioned that, astrology, religious rituals, New Age, Christian New Age, Angel Numbers. Oh my God, that's something coming out now. Angel Numbers, Angel Feathers. Renounce it in Jesus' name. Terror Cards. Yes. Angel Cards. Jewish, Sorry. Jewish, um, Jewish Roots, the, the Hebrew Israelites. My goodness. Use wisdom, everybody. Renounce any spirits that enter your body through sexual intercourse, heterosexual, homosexual, with someone who was also infected with these spirits. You get transfer spirits, right? Next, renounce and reject any sin. It's kind of repeating, but I'm going to read it anyway. Um, the masonry, Freemasons. The Freemasons. <laughs> I'll say it again. The Freemasons, the, the, uh, the um, pyramid with the eye in the middle. I'm sure my family will never see this video, so I'll just say, my brother and his wife that got married in a church with that, that ab above the altar. I think it was a Freemason church. I don't know. They didn't, maybe, maybe they were in the Freemasons. I don't know. But I'm just like, wow, that's Freemasons. It's the Freemasons, yeah, I mean, it's associated with the Illuminati, right? Okay, so I'm reading here. Um, iniquity, I'll stop a minute and say, you know, renouncing iniquity. Iniquity is the thing that we inherited from Adam. We all have iniquity, every single person, right? We, it came from our parents. We know what iniquity we have special to us because we just look at our parents. Fear. Oh my gosh, depression, iniquity, trusting fear over trusting God. Illnesses, um, disability, child abuse, wickedness, witchcraft, poverty, curses passed down to you from your sinful family tree. Renounce any generational sin or curses going back 10 generations. If you were born out of wedlock, and you have not, in, in the name of Jesus and under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you have not renounced that curse, you have not broken that curse of being born out of wedlock, your life is affected. Now that curse, the Bible says, carries down for 10 generations. Next time you're in the presence of the Lord, just break it. Because somebody in the last 10 generations probably got, had babies out of wedlock, then you're a product of that. So just break it. Break it in Jesus' name. If you have a child and you were not married when you had that child, you need to repent. You need to repent. I'd even repent if you got conceived that child out of wedlock. Repent. Get deliverance. Okay, so after you, you are delivered, you're going to go through... Um, Okay, what's he say here? You're going to go through the procedure section. It's on the website. Again, to be sure they're all gone. Okay, so you're going to go over this procedure again. You know, you just kind of you go through it once, and then you go through it again. If you're still yawning, they're still coming out. Now, you might not be able to do all this in one night. You won't be able to do this. Yes. 
it was just what you're saying, mm -hmm. doing all of this in one sitting, or is this like a process? This is a process. They came in layers. They're going to leave in layers. They came in over time. They're going to leave over time. Now, I say this. If you spent the last 35 years, 40 years sinning, <laughs> you picked up a lot of spirits. Okay? I don't care what kind of sinner you were, a big sinner, a little sinner. You picked up spirits, right? Um... Give God time to work in your life. I meet a person, they begin deliverance. Like the first time they come in and they get some deliverance and it's the first time they ever did it. Um, I say, okay, now you begin your, you've begun your spiritual recovery. Minimum, give God a year. <laughs> Stay out of a relationship. I was engaged to be married when I first started deliverance 10 years ago, or a little over 10 years ago. And I broke off that engagement. It was hard. And I, I kind of waffled back and forth regretting it and being mad at the people who told me to do that. And, you know, I'll be honest, I did. But God showed me about a year ago uh, how, how um, that saved me from a horrible, horrible life. Amen. Yeah. Yep. And uh, off camera, I'll, I'll share that. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you want to keep going. You got to keep working on this. So you keep going through self-deliverance. Give it a year. Stay out of relationship with a man or a woman, you know, if you're a guy. Um, you want to stick with the program. Okay, stick with the program. Don't go out there looking at different ministries, trying different techniques. You know, um, it's very important that you do the Bible study, number eight. Very, very important to complete this Bible study right away. And so for the YouTubers, I will mention the scriptures. So Acts 19, read all of Acts 19. Romans 12, 1 and 2. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 4, 20, verses 21 through 32. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. John chapter 5, verses 14. Chapter 8, verse 11. Matthew chapter 12. Luke chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. James chapter 1, verse 21. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 7, and the, apost uh, the epistle of John, uh, the gospel of John, chapters 14, 15, and 16. I can't tell you how long you need to just stick on those scriptures, but you do need to do it for a time. Read it over, read it in the morning, read it at night. You could do a Derek Prince God's medicine bottle, read it in the morning, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Get healing for your body. Get healing for your mind. Okay, the last portion of this, and thanks for staying with me, it's been an hour already, um, post-deliverance. I'm just going to read this. Now that you've been delivered from evil spirits and or a mental, emotional, or physical illness, you must take several aggressive and proactive steps to maintain your healing so that you will not become reinfected with demons and sickness and or sickness. This is your new 12-step program. This one actually works. <laughs> Read it carefully. Many people who are delivered from spirits become reinfected. Many people. It's not fun. It can be avoided by building an intimate relationship with Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the Word of God, healing and deliverance are not a cure-all. i um, read that again. Healing and deliverance is not a cure-all. You must renew your mind and fulfill your destiny. You must be proactive and aggressive. You cannot be passive. Okay, so here are the next steps. So number one, I'm going to go through these quickly. 
You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? One of the evidences of having received the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. That is not the only evidence, but it is one of the evidence evidences. Okay? So, um, you want to release your gift of tongues. This is so important. Every believer, if you're born again, then you have the ability to pray in the Holy Spirit. You have the ability to speak in tongues. And this is an unknown language to yourself, but perfectly um, understandable by God. And it's going to help you fight. So if you need help with that, ask somebody here at the center. I think everyone in here has got it. Yeah. If you don't have your gift of tongues yet, you can talk to me and I'll help you with that. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why people don't have it or they haven't released it yet. Because of the confusion, doubt, or false teaching they've received. There's a false teaching out there that says, no, they don't, we don't speak in tongues anymore. But that's false. Um, without the baptism of the Spirit, your chances of being permanently healed and delivered diminish. diminish. So it is a conduit to the gifts of the Spirit and the dunamis power of God. That's the power of God. Okay, so if you go on our website on the teaching page and you look up glossa, it will give you the breakdown in the scriptures that talk about um, speaking in tongues. All right. Number two, please get rid of all traces of sin in your life. Sleeping around? No, negative attitudes. Get rid of negative attitudes, complaining, negative words, negative behaviors, hobbies, interests, and recreations. They all must be eliminated right away. If you go back into sin, you may become sicker than you were before you were healed. You have to catch your thoughts. You start to complain. You start to gossip. You start to, you know, be negative about yourself, about your situation. You've got to stop it. Number three, forgive and release ought. Negative emotions or thoughts um, for anyone who's ever hurt you. Okay? You got to, we dealt with that in the beginning, right? So you got to keep up on that. Unforgiveness, awe, and bitterness are the main routes of demon reinfestation. You get deliverance, you better believe someone's coming to offend you. Catch it. You got to catch it. You got to like be aware. 48 hour rule. They're going to have your car break down. Somebody at work's going to make you mad. <laughs> Somebody in your house is going to just say something stupid. Just take a step back and be like, oh, that, that's the Spirit's working right there. I see it. I see it. I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. Okay? And if you do, you just catch it right away and get rid of it. Okay? It's called maintenance. <laughs> Any negative feelings or thoughts like ought about yourself or others must be removed and released to the Lord. You got to keep working on that. Regret. Man, why did I do that? 20 years ago. Man, I should have I should have finished. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody right now. 20 years ago and I didn't finish that degree. I didn't take that job. I didn't marry that person. Ah. I vey, right? Oh my gosh. Stop it. Let it go already. The Lord is moving you on, moving you forward. That is in the past. That, you know your past doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> it's gone. And you know what? That thing you thought was so great back then, I bet it was a delusion. <laughs> it was never that great. Over time, your mind has morphed it into something really great. <laughs> That's good. Okay. The Lord will remove them if you agree to release them. You have to come in and agree. You, God loves partnership. Partner with God on this. He wants you to go, come with me. Let's do it together. Isn't that beautiful? He says, I, I'm, your, I'm your partner. 
Yes. I'm your partner in this. Yes. I want to help you release this. You agree with me and I'll help you release it. Okay, I had a person in my office today, he's like, yeah, if I'm a good person and I do things right, then I'll deserve my spot in heaven. I said, well, that's, that sounds good, but that's not correct. That's wrong. You don't do much of anything. All you do is say, okay, I accept this free gift of salvation. I partner with you. Help me, Lord, help me to not sin. Help me, Lord. Amen. I think that's my prayer, like every day. Lord, help me. Help my friends. Help my family. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing specific prayers anymore. It's all, just help them, Lord. I don't know what, <laughs> what you want for them, but please help them. Help my mom, Lord. Help my brothers. Help my friends. Okay? He will do it. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. He is our deliverer. He is our strong tower. He's our defense. Okay? Taking offenses will ruin your spiritual life. Okay? And it's going to break down your health. It's going to break down your health. Taking offenses. Oh, wow, I can't believe that person said that to me. How dare that person cut me off in traffic. Someone ate my lunch. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> That's a good example. <laughs> okay, unforgiveness and uh, are the root causes of autoimmune diseases. What is some of Unforgiveness and ought. We forgive here, we release from our emotions. Ought uh, is that yucky feeling you've got for somebody. Okay, so you just think if your ex walked in the door right now, how would you respond? <laughs> you look old. That's great. <laughs> what are examples of what are autoimmune diseases? Arthritis. Arthritis is autoimmune. It attacks yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Lupus. Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. Yeah, that's a big one. All right, number four. Start attending a solid, hardcore, spirit-filled, full gospel church or home group. Uh, if you find one, let me know. Okay. <laughs> Renju knows of one on Saturday nights. It's a good one. Um, yeah, so here he's listed some places to stay away from. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you got to find one that believes in the spirit world and understands the moving of the Holy Spirit and demons. Okay, this is going to be difficult. You will need their prayers. Okay, so you, you start a deliverance. You're going to need to be plugged into, like I said, some type of fellowship, some type of people that know what you're going through because... Like Angie said, it can be physically painful. Yeah, it's scary. Things, you know, come and giving you weird dreams at night and you end up with scratch. I mean, crazy stuff can happen to people. You need somebody to talk to. To encourage you to keep going. To encourage you to keep going, that's right. Yeah. You know? You gotta be plugged in. You gotta be plugged in. You got to be. All right. You know, I did deliverance a long time ago with B and Health, but there was nothing around to stay plugged in. Mm -hmm. So I went back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's come right back. Yeah. Mm. So it's motivation. you got to find a place. Maybe you need to start a place. No. Finish your deliverance first. <laughs> don't do that. Finish your deliverance. And what do I mean by that? I, I kind of don't like the, the terminology of finishing your deliverance, but get through at least a year. Get through a good part of it where you're feeling a lot better. You're thinking more clearly. God begins to use you. Um, I don't really know anybody that doesn't have to do self-deliverance still. You still got a maintenance, right? So, but but get... Um, David Middleton, the G Outreach Jesus and Lord Outreach Center. That's a place some people like, yes. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll cut that out. All right. So, um, 
That's the only one I know of, though, that has the same belief system that I... They are similar. They have similar beliefs as this place. Correct. Uh -huh. <laughs> they do. I won't stop. So non-full gospel denominations are usually powerless against demons. Okay? So number five. Please remove close relationships with carnal friends and relatives who lead you into doubt and sin. Uh, that's so hard. Okay, this is going to be hard. So if you're living with the person, <laughs> don't talk about demons with that person. <laughs> Stop it. Stop talking to them about your spiritual recovery process because they will not understand so so here it is the spirit of rejection sets you up okay it gets your spouse to ask you a question about how you're going in your spiritual journey and you're so you're like oh yes they're finally on board don't take the bait yeah. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Mm. Get through your time, like a year, I think it's good. Give God a year, okay? Find other brothers and sisters that are like-minded. Do not talk to your family members about this. They don't get it. You pray for them, but don't talk to them about it, even if they're interested. Yeah, I'm trying to talk to you about it. He was like, you're crazy, Mom. Exactly, right. So the, the spirit of rejection wants to set you up to get you in a position so you can get rejected. Yeah. So. It puts a thought in your mind that, oh, my husband's interested in this. They, he asked me a question. <laughs> my husband asked me, so how did your deliverance go? It's a setup. It's a setup. Just say, fine. So what do you want for dinner? <laughs> Change the subject. Yes. Do not talk, right? Do not talk to them about it. True. Wives, am I right? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for support. Crazy people. Okay. But, yes. When Brother Mike was online. Uh huh. That's a good church. He goes, this guy is good. Who is this? <laughs> the crazy dudes that you call me. Oh, preach really good. Yeah. And I was like, um, Brother Mike. I'm, I'm glad you like him, honey. And just yeah. keep moving. Really Don't, crazy. no conversation at that point. I know. And that's it. And he listens to the whole entire thing. Great. We love Brother Mike on Sunday mornings because he's calm. He's, he's you know, he's teaching. He's doing it from home. It's a podcast, yeah. Uh, so I'm reading here. I'm, I'm like, okay, where am I at? Okay, demons get back in through soul ties. Now, not all soul ties are bad. That's it, I'm going to say. They get back in through romantic relationships. They can come back in through unsaved relatives. Holidays are coming. Uh -oh. They come back in through carnal best friends. Even if they're Christians, carnal best friends, sinful work associates, and anyone Satan can use to encourage you to behave, play, or sin, or, or talk sinfully. Okay? Be careful as, as spirits almost always use close associates to wound your soul and distract your mind from the word. If you won't let these relationships go, the demons won't let you go. So you can let go of a certain measure of that relationship, especially if that person's living in your house. Spouse, child. You, you just know at this time you can't share that intimate spiritual conversation with them. You just can't do it. Okay. So for now, you, you put it on the shelf. It's a prayer request. Lord, one day, that's my hope, my prayer, to have that conversation with my husband, with my children. But while I'm going through this deliverance process, I'm not going to engage in that conversation. It'll backfire, I promise you. <laughs> yeah. So um, number six, attend Bible studies, worship service. Okay, church. Um, 
Once you find a place, now, even if you're going to a church that doesn't do deliver, I had a, a gal ask me, um, well, can I go to church even though they don't believe in deliverance? Sure. Um, don't let them pray for you or put hands on you. Go in, a worship, you know. Um, you want to be careful about the church that you choose. Um, maybe... You know, you go in, you hear the word, you leave. You, if you're in, if you're here in Phoenix, and you come here for service, right? While you're in this process of deliverance, I'm not talking the rest of your life. If you do go to a church and you're not quite sure, you know, you plead the blood of Jesus. You're covered. You're safe, right? It's very powerful. It's very powerful. Um, I'm, I'm always, I'm always tempted to go to the Baptist church because, you know, I went to a Southern Baptist college, a university, and we, at chapel, we sang a lot of those songs. And so it makes my heart feel good, my soul. So I'm always tempted to go back, um, just to hear that encouraging message, you know, but I know where my food really comes from. It comes from me and my Bible in the morning with a cup of coffee. Amen. That's where my food comes from. Amen. I supplement it with some Brother Mike. I supplement it with some Brother Rick sometimes. <laughs> what about like coming here like yeah. Thursdays and Fridays? And yeah. Zoom no, absolutely. If you are in Phoenix area, I would come here as often as you can. Sit by yourself. Sure, why not? For now, right? For right now, just get here, go through the deliverance service at the end of the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Just keep going. And then God and God will make it clear to you when it's time to move on. Maybe you, you, know, you move to a different church or you start a terror cell. Mike talks about those where you go in, right? You've learned about deliverance. You've gotten your healing. Now you're going in and you're finding there's lots of sick people in the church. Meet one. So get another person to go with you who believes like you do and, and pray for them and do some deliverance on them. Help them get healed. And then go to the next one. Okay. And then I'll just finish that by saying, then you get kicked out. Because <laughs> they don't like that. They don't like that. And then, and then it's really a promotion. And then you go to another church. And you, and you, uh, yeah, you pick off some more sick people and get them healed. All right. And that's what Mike talks about. It's funny. All right. Uh, so delete any kind of demonic or fleshly recreation you previously enjoyed. I'm just going to read down the list here. So worldly or fleshly movies, things that appeal to your flesh, lustful, fantasy. Okay. While you're going through deliverance, you want to get rid of that. And then on you, when you're on the other side of it, you won't even be interested in those movies anymore. You won't even want it. Music, okay? Sports, um, anything metal, hip-hop, garage rock, psychedelic rock, gangster rap, techno, country rock, acid rock, indie rock, grunge, glam, punk, hard rock. <laughs> You know, um, you know, Jesus died. He died for us. And so I don't really know why I would be singing any other I agree. song that didn't give some gift of love to my Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, you know, I'm saying that in general. I'm saying it for me. We're all individuals. I used to, before I got saved in 1992, um, I, one of my, I saw a Metallica in concert that summer before I got saved. Uh, Skid Row is a band. It's a very heavy, heavy rock and roll band. That was like my favorite band. Um, I listened to Queensryche and, and Pink Floyd and, you know, kind of softer, like Led Zeppelin, a little softer rock, but I was all into that music. And then God got my attention. I was looking around for him. And then finally, he made it really clear. And at that moment, um, there was music playing, and it was a guy by the name of Keith Green. Um, 
and that changed my life. It changed my life. Keith Green's music, um, it's on YouTube. I found it recently, and it's a good, good quality. Um, anyway, he's passed away, but he was a very anointed man of God, and he, he loved the Lord, and he taught the Bible. He taught the Bible stories in his music, and that's how I learned Bible stories because I never went to Sunday school or anything. So in one year, actually in six months' time, I went from Metallica to like Keith Green, which is like, to Keith Green, which is like folk music. <laughs> okay. I went from like this, this metal, hard rock and political music, Queensryche, a very political band out of uh, England, I believe. And I was very into them, but I went from that, God changed my heart. I became born again and I had different desires. And so that's what, that's what happens. Um, you know, you got to get off. Is MTV still around? Yes. No, okay. You know, uh, video games, Warcraft, Grand Theft Auto, there's, there's all kinds of different stuff out there to, to steal your attention. Carnal TV shows, comedy clubs, bars, and happy hour. Um, you need to stop doing that. It's no place for a Christian. It's no place. Any recreation that distracts your affections and attentions from the Lord and is used by spirits and does not glorify God, they must leave. If you ride the fence, the demons will ride you right into a trench. If you're going to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church, those spirits are going to make your life really miserable. Okay? Um, so you want to delete your unsaved um, boyfriend. Okay, delete, delete your exes. Can I say that? Delete your exes, saved or unsaved, just let them go. Um, fiancés, you got to delete these people, girlfriends. Um, he wrote it down on here. I'm going to just read it. DL group, live-in lovers, friend with benefits, etc. God has a wonderful soulmate picked out specifically for you. He will send them to you after you are spiritually mature and your inner healing and deliverance is complete. Any form of homosexuality, trans activity, drag, bisexual, or pornography will allow spirits to re-enter your body and brain. Movies, internet chat rooms, magazines, phone sex, all that stuff. You must flee fornication. Is there another page? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there more of these? Sorry. Nine. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. Is this the last two I'm on? No. Um, read the Bible. Yes. Okay, you got to read the Bible every day, right? Pray in solitude. Um, some people have m noise on all the time. It's really hard to hear the Holy Spirit when you have something playing all the time. Just take some time to pray in solitude and silence. Solitude daily, in addition to your worship service and group Bible study, speak in tongues on and off all day long for self education and power. It must become second nature to you. Memorize a couple of scriptures every month and quote them daily. Start serving the Lord. Do you have to be completely delivered before you start serving the Lord? No. No, you do not. Um, Serve them with your time, your talents, your treasures by helping others, working in a ministry, participating in an evangelism program, praying for the sick, seeing others delivered from demons and illnesses, just like you were. You need to adopt a Holy Spirit lifestyle based on freely you have received, now freely give. <sighs> Once you get into deliverance, there's no going back. You can't unknow the fact that you have you had or have evil spirits in your body. You have to continue on. If you don't continue on, it will get much worse for you. Number 11. So don't start if you're not going to finish. 
Thank you, Sister Barbara. Okay, your old lifestyle was a breeding ground for sin, evil spirits, um, and evil spirits. Your new life must be one of adoring worship of Jesus. Yeshua. Yeshua. Your body must become the temple of the Holy Spirit, a shrine of holiness. The Son of God is not just a buddy or a pal. Your heavenly Father is not your pop. <laughs> He's not your dad. He's not your papa. He's not your daddy. But your eternal sovereign king and divine heavenly father. They are um, to always be addressed and treated with the utmost respect. Amen. Okay? The Lord will um, communicate with you intimately. And, and there's, there's an intimacy there. But to address him casually, oh, you know, my, my, my daddy in heaven will take care of it. you got to be careful of that. Be careful. Mm -hmm. What about Abba God? That's his I, I didn't say that in there. Uh, yeah, but I know that's what I'm asking about. Jesus said that we should address him that way. So okay, that's, that's a nice Abba Father, Abba Father yeah. a term of endearment, right? Because it means as a papa or daddy. Yeah, so I, I just think that the, the spirit of the message here is not to be casual with how you're addressing the Lord. Okay. And I will say this. Um, I would be careful if you do use terms like Abba or, or Daddy God, you know, kind of like in that intimate, you do it between you and God. Don't let other people hear you because you don't know where they are in their journey. Mm, that's and that could bring offense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Say, you know, what God uh, permits for you and your relationship with Him not may not be for that other person. Right. And it, could, it can cause a problem. Mm -hmm. I had learned that the hard way. Um, so, number 12... Um, so this here, again, is your initial Bible study. So there's a Bible study right after you do deliverance, and then the post-deliverance after you get through all of this that I just read is another one. Um, it will renew your life. So you want to read Romans 8, Romans 12, 1 and 2, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, Ephesians chapter 6, 11 through 18, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. These are some repeats. John chapter 5, verse 14, and chapter 8, verse 11. You must learn spiritual warfare to maintain your healing. Find your spiritual destiny and obtain God's perfect will for your life. By His grace and your obedience, you will walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, the lust of your soul and body. Your new life of power and joy starts now. You've been called by God to fulfill your specific purpose in life. Your destiny is calling you. The gifts of the Spirit are within your reach. 1 Corinthians 12. Seek diligently the ones the Spirit wants you to have. The Spirit will reveal to you the ones that He wants you to have. Okay, you don't need to take a, a personality spiritual gift test. To figure it out. Okay? Don't do that. Don't worry about it. Don't ask 10 people either. What do you think my spiritual gift is? The Holy Spirit will tell you. He will communicate it. You'll begin to see it flowing through your life, and then you'll know. Okay? Um, the most important gift is to be your strongest one. 1 Corinthians 13. The gift of love. Um, okay, if you need additional prayer, come to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Um, number 14. Please discontinue watching Deliverance Ministers on your YouTube. I said this already. <laughs> this is while you're in your process, right? But be, be mindful. TikTok. Whew. That hurts the brain. Discontinue that. Instagram, etc. Over 90% of them have familiar spirits. And they will distract you. So, if you're here, stay here. Don't run off to this woman's conference. Don't run over here to that breakfast. Don't go over here to that, you know. Just stay here. Stay. 
plugged in, stay focused. Do not get involved with prophetic ministries. For example, Bethel, Sid Roth, Kat Kerr, the New Apostolic Reformation, etc. These ministries are heavily infected with familiar spirits and will allow you to pick up transfer spirits. It happens really easily and really quickly. So um, keep going. And then number 15, uh, please consider uh, supporting our ministry. And there is a donation page there. And he says, love to all, Brother Mike. So thanks for this. So um, that concludes that chapter on self-deliverance. Um, we're going to do some practice, but we're not going to videotape that. So thanks for watching. <laughs>